Hello guys and welcome to another video. I'm Adi from Pixel Profits and this is part one in a series of guides on how to use Audacity. In this series I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get up and running and start creating great sounding vocals for your YouTube videos. In this part of the series we're going to focus on the initial setup of Audacity. By the end of the series you'll be able to record and edit your audio and apply effects to make your voice sound great. If you find this tutorial useful, like it and leave me a comment. It's always greatly appreciated. I will also try to answer any questions you have, so feel free to ask. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. OK, let's get started. When you open Audacity for the first time, you'll see a blank space with a number of toolbars at the top. Now, before we do anything else in Audacity, we're going to have to make sure that we check a few settings within our operating system. Available options may vary depending on whether you have a dedicated sound card. If you do, try to match the settings I go through as closely as possible. My operating system is Windows 10. If you have a Mac, try to set equivalent options in your OS. For the default Windows sound device, we need to look at the small speaker icon in the notification area and right click on it. Then select sounds. If you can't see the speaker icon for some reason, you can click the search icon in the taskbar and type sounds. Then select change system sounds control panel. Once the sound window appears, select the recording tab. Now find your microphone in the list and click set default. Now click properties and go to the levels tab and set this to 100. Under the advanced tab, choose 48,000 hertz. Depending on your microphone, you may have different options here, but choose the closest you can get to what I've selected. So if possible, 48,000 Hz, but otherwise you can leave it at 44,100 Hz if that's the closest alternative that you have. We'll talk about this setting more in a moment. Under the Exclusive Mode section, make sure that both checkboxes are selected. This will help us to give Audacity direct and exclusive access to our audio device later. Click OK and then close the sound window. Back in Audacity, if we look at the lower left of the screen, you'll see project rate in Hertz. The default value is 44,100. We can select another option here, but it will only apply to this project and then default back to 44,100 next time you start a new project. If you selected 44,100 Hertz in the Windows sound settings a moment ago, then you can leave this set at 44,100 within Audacity. But if you are able to select 48,000, then we can change Audacity's default by going to Edit, Preferences. In the Preferences window, select the Quality option from the menu tree. Under Sampling, set the default rate to 48000. Default sample format should be 32-bit float. Also copy my other settings here and then click OK to close the window. So the reason we selected 48000 Hz is because it's a common standard for video audio. It's also one of the two recommended upload encoding settings for YouTube. I prefer to match these recommendations when I can to try and avoid any further processing by YouTube where possible. The next step is to set up our Audacity interface. If yours looks different from mine, we can go to View, Toolbars and Reset Toolbars and this will set things back to the default position. Also, feel free to copy my selections from within the Toolbars menu if you're missing any things that you can see on my screen. If you wish, you can move toolbars around by grabbing the handles and dragging them to a different position. Now let's set up the correct recording and playback devices. Start off by clicking the drop down menu in the device toolbar and select Windows WAS API. MME offers the greatest compatibility with devices. WAS API, or Windows Audio Session API to use its full name, may result in you experiencing less latency. The real benefit though, is that it allows Audacity to directly control and access devices bypassing the system mixer, default settings, effects set by the audio driver, and so on. The different options can cause issues for some people depending on your hardware and configuration. So if you experience any sound issues while recording, try selecting different options here to see if that fixes the problem. Now we need to select our microphone and playback device. Next to the microphone icon, select your microphone from the drop down list. It's not necessary to record voice over audio in stereo, so feel free to select mono here if you have the option. The reason is that when you listen to someone talking, the voice comes from a single sound source, so we speak in mono. 
Recording in stereo is unnecessary for voiceover, as all it really does is make the resulting audio file bigger. Now under the playback drop down box, next to the small speaker icon, select whichever option represents where you want to hear your sound from. I recommend you use a pair of good quality headphones for this, as you'll be able to hear problems with your voice much more easily. So select whichever output your headphones are plugged into, if you have some. Otherwise, just use good speakers and select that output. Our recording and playback devices are now set up, so let's test that they are working. On the recording meter, you'll probably see click to start monitoring. Click on the bar and then speak into your microphone. You should see the bar moving as you do so, which shows that Audacity is receiving a signal from your microphone. We need to make sure that the level of the input is not reaching or exceeding 0 dB when you're talking. If it is, clipping will occur, which will cause distortion in your recordings and make them sound terrible. If clipping is occurring, use the toolbar to lower the input level of the mic until no clipping occurs. You don't need the input level to be too high, so dial it back a little so that when you speak, you're somewhere above minus 18 dB. Higher is OK too, as long as you're not too close to zero. Your voice will change volume as you speak, so make sure it always stays a safe amount below zero dB. If you're not using a preamp and just have your microphone connected directly to your PC, say through USB, then you may not get anywhere near 0 dB anyway. Don't worry, we'll look at boosting levels up later. The transcription toolbar determines at what speed your recording will be played back at. If you hover the mouse over the slider, you should see that it's at 1. If not, change it to 1. Lastly, let's look briefly at a very important option, and that's hotkeys. I strongly recommend that you start using and learning as many as possible right from the start. Hotkeys will speed up your work process. If we go to Edit, Preferences, Keyboard, we can view or change the hotkeys assigned. Just click a function in the menu tree to see the hotkey assigned. We'll go through many of these as we progress through this series, and I'll keep reminding you and myself to use them. Hotkeys are great, so take advantage of them when you can. And that's the initial setup done. The good news is, when you close Audacity, all of the options we've changed today should be retained. Congratulations, you're now ready to record. Join me in part two of this series where we'll make our first test recording and start looking at some of the basic tools we'll need to edit and manipulate our audio. If you found this video useful, leave me a like and a comment. Also subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell if you want to see more content like this. As always guys, I really appreciate your time and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and thanks for watching.